Okay, guys, good morning, everyone. Today we are going to continue with our book club on the anatomy for diagnostic imaging, the Orion, with your colleagues, Dr. Shadan. She will continue with the chest, uh, blood vessels, and some other things. Good morning, everyone. Today I'll present the radiological anatomy of the thorax, part two. First, I will start with the great vessels. First of all, the aorta. The aorta is the largest artery of the body. It divides into two great uh, parts, the thoracic aorta and the abdominal aorta. Today, I will discuss the thoracic aorta. The thoracic aorta divides into three parts, the ascending aorta, arch of the aorta, and the descending aorta. The ascending aorta it starts from the aortic valve at the level of the lower border of the third costal cartilage. Uh, in the first few centimeters of the ascending aorta, it enclosed with the pulmonary trunk in a common sheath of pericardium. It ascends anteriorly and to the right, passing over the right pulmonary artery and right main bronchus. The ascending aorta gives two branches uh, from the aortic sinuses, uh, the right and left coronary arteries, which supply the uh, mus uh, muscles of the heart. Then the arch of the aorta, this passes posteriorly and from the right to the left, arched over the left main stem bronchus and pulmonary artery to come to lie to the left of the uh, T4 vertebra. Anterior and to the left of the arch of the aorta is the left lung and the pleura. On the right, uh, the posterior relation from front to back are trachea, esophagus, and thoracic duct and body of the T4. The inferior aspect of the uh, arch of the aorta connected to the pulmonary trunk via ligamentum arteriosum, which is remnant of the ductus arteriosus. The main branch of the aortic arch. <coughs> uh, three main branches of the aortic arch from front to back. Uh, the more anteriorly is the brachiocephalic. Here is the brachiocephalic artery. And posterior lateral to it is the left common carotid artery. Posterior lateral to the left common carotid is the left subclavian artery. Uh, the brachiocephalic artery and the left common carotid artery arise from in, in front of the trachea and ascend in a V-shape to come to lie to the sides of the trachea. And then the left common carotid bifurcate into the right common carotid and right subclavian artery. Ma minor branches may arise from the aortic arch like uh, one, uh, one or both bronchial arteries, uh, thyroidia imma artery, inferior thyroid artery, anterior th uh, thoracic artery. Internal thoracic artery. Sorry, internal thoracic artery. The aortic isthmus, uh, this area is important because this is a relatively a fixed area and is prone to injury. And uh, here, this is the junction between the arch of the aorta and the descending aorta. Uh, the aortic uh, mural tear and transection occurs here after uh, injury, blunt injury. The last part, uh, the descending aorta, it passes inferiorly from the posterior mediastinum to the left of the spinal column. Its relation uh, from the left pleura and left lung, and uh, posteriorly the vertebral column and hemiazygous vein. To the right, to the right, the thoracic duct and the uh, azygous vein. Uh, the esophagus first, uh, in the highest point, lie to the right of the descending aorta, then pass anterior to it and to the left to enter to the esophageal hiatus at the level of the T10. Also, the left uh, main bronchus uh, and le uh, left pulmonary artery and left hilum lies anterior to the uh, descending aorta, and uh, esophagus also lies anterior to the descending aorta. The branch of the descending aorta First, uh, nine, nine pairs of posterior intercostal and a pair of subcostal. This arise from the posterior aspect of the descending aorta and run in the neurovascular groove of the third to twelve rib. That's why in case of correctation of aorta, the rib notching we see from the level of the th rib three to twelve and the first and second rib spurt. Uh, the other branch, two to three bronchial artery, uh, their origin are variable. Four to five esophageal artery arising from the anterior aspect, mediastinal branch, phrenic branch, and pericardial branch. There are some vascular anomalies uh, of the aortic arch. Uh, I will discuss some of them. 
here this is the normal arch the uh, ri right brachiocephalic artery divides into uh, right common carotid and right subclavian and this is a vertebral artery arising from the right subclavian and here the left common carotid and left subclavian but if the uh, left common carotid arise from the uh, right brachiocephalic uh, this uh, anomaly will arise and uh, called bovine arch the two aortic uh, two, two, com uh, two carotid uh, artery represent the arch and this is uh, bovine arch why do they call it bovine uh, it looks like the bov uh, the arch of the bovine the right Bo and the left yeah the cows have this yes. kind of yes. mm -hmm. so they call it bovine uh, the another one uh, when the vertebral uh, artery arises directly from the aortic arch between the uh, left common carotid and left subclavian uh, and another anomaly which is important uh, when the right subclavian arising distal to the left subclavian and runs uh, to the right posterior to the esophagus and may cause indentation on the posterior aspect of the esophagus uh, also this is present here the when the <laughs> structure behind vascular structure behind the esophagus this is uh, right subclavian artery and this one is the double arch we see the double arch of the aorta right and left and uh, the common carotid and uh, subclavian arising from each arch uh, the right arch will be larger and uh, superior uh, compared to the left uh, sometimes mm -hmm. there will be just uh, there will be a right aortic arch right sided aortic arch uh, this is uh, associated with the teratology of phallus and uh, m sometimes the common origin of the there is common origin of the left common carotid and subclavian as left brachiocephalic artery uh, rarely there is no common carotid and the internal and external ca uh, carotid arise separately from the aortic arch uh, and the origin of the brachiocephalic and left common carotid may may vary uh, may arise earlier or the more distally if it arises um, earlier, the left common carotid uh, pass anterior to the trachea to go to the left position, or if it arises more distally, the brachiocephalic uh, passes uh, anterior to the trachea to go to the uh, right uh, side of the uh, neck, and uh, in both uh, position, uh, both uh, situations, there will be compression over the trachea, and this is more announced in infant because of uh, crowded superior mediastinum. Another artery, subclavian artery, uh, we have right and left subclavian artery. Uh, the right subclavian artery arises from the bifurcation of the brachiocephalic artery behind the uh, right sternoclavicular joint. The left subclavian artery uh, arises directly from the aortic arch in front of the trachea at the level of the T3, T4 disc space. It ascends to the left of the trachea to lie uh, behind the left sternoclavicular joint. At this level, both are lie behind the sternoclavicular joint and will ascend and have the same course. The subclavian artery divides into three parts according to the insertion of the scalenus anterior, uh, according to the position of the scalenus anterior muscle. The part which is uh, proximal to the scalenus anterior, this is called the first part, from the origin to the medial border of the scalenus anterior. And the second part behind the scalenus anterior, and, uh, and this, the muscle will uh, separate it from the scalenus vein. And the third part, lateral subclavian, subclavian vein, sorry. Uh, the lateral part uh, begins from the, the third part begins from lateral border of the scalenus anterior uh, to the lateral border of the first rib. And here the subclavian will uh, pass to the uh, upper, upper limb as the axillary, uh, axillary artery. Okay. Uh, here, uh, uh, pulmonary arteries. Uh, the pulmonary arteries arise from the pulmonary trunk, uh, which is about 5 cm long. Uh, first, at the beginning, it's uh, anterior to the aorta. Uh, then, it passes posteriorly and to the left, and gives two branches, uh, the left uh, pulmonary uh, artery and the right pulmonary artery. Uh, the left pulmonary artery uh, arched over the uh, left uh, pulmonary, uh, uh, sorry, left uh, mm -hmm. bro main uh, bronchus, and so it's uh, superior to the left main bronchus, and here the bronchus is called hip arterial bronchus. 
the right uh, pulmonary artery uh, passes behind the ascending uh, ascending aorta and superior vena cava to uh, pass anterior to the uh, main pulmonary uh, main uh, stem bronchus and uh, the right uh, right pulmonary is longer uh, than the left uh, the left is uh, short uh, shorter smaller and uh, higher in position uh, the upper border uh, the upper surface of the left pulmonary uh, artery attached to the uh, inferior border of the aortic arch by the ligamentum arteriosum the both arteries uh, uh, lie behind the uh, left superior pulmonary vein this is a CT angiogram uh, shows the right and left pulmonary artery the, we see the this left is what we call the maximal intensity projection this is pulmonary CT angiogram where we inject large dose of contrast media and we image at a specific time using usually we use bullet striking we said what's bullet striking mm -hmm. yes. uh, the result will be very intensely opacified pulmonary vessels you usually use that to look for pulmonary embolism in cases mm -hmm. of pulmonary embolism or suspected pulmonary embolism however here it's very nicely demonstrates the arterial anatomy of the lung as yes. uh, she was saying the pulmonary arteries right and left the left is higher in position compared to the right yep. The great veins. Uh, great veins of the uh, thorax uh, are the brachiocephalic right and left. The brachiocephalic vein uh, on either side is formed by the union of the internal jugular and uh, this internal jugular and uh, subclavian veins on either side behind the medial end of the clavicle. On the right, uh, the brachiocephalic vein runs inferiorly behind the right border of the manubrium. <coughs> The left brachiocephalic is longer and crosses uh, anterior to the uh, vessels of the aortic arch and runs obliquely uh, to unite with the join the uh, right brachiocephalic vein to form the superior vena cava uh, and uh, from here it descends down uh, in the lateral border of the manubrium. The only tributary of the uh, superior vena cava is the azygous vein which enters its posterior aspect. Uh, the uh, tributaries of the uh, brachiocephalic uh, veins uh, are uh, internal uh, thoracic mammary vein, uh, inferior thyroid vein, uh, left uh, superior intercostal vein. Here the uh, right brachiocephalic and left brachiocephalic forming the superior vena cava which enter the right atrium. Uh, the esophagus. The esophagus begins at the level of the C5-6 uh, as a continuation of the oropharynx. It descends behind the trachea, this is the trachea behind the trachea and thyroid, uh, lying in front of the vertebral, uh, cervical vertebra. It is slightly to the left, inclines to the left, and then returning to the midline at the level of T5, where it passes to the left again and enters the diaphragm at the T10. In the chest, it passes behind the trachea and left main. Here we see, it passes behind the trachea and the uh, left uh, main stem bronchus and left pulmonary artery, and uh, it slides anterior to the uh, vertebral column. And uh, the azygous vein is between the trachea and the esophagus, the left azygous. And the, it enters the abdomen between the left cross of the diaphragm and left dome, left lobe of the liver. Then passes to the left to the midline towards the gastroesophageal junction. Its muscular role in the upper third is musculoskeletal and, <coughs> and then transition to the smooth muscle in the lower third. This is ultrasound showing the esophagus. It's lying to the left of the trachea and behind the thyroid and lateral to it is the vessels of the neck. Uh, the wall of the esophagus is in the anteriorly hyperechoic and then a layer of hypoechoic and then after uh, the outer is hyperechoic. Uh, this is uh, so called the uh, gut signature and uh, it's it is uh, demonstrate the wall of the GI tract. Here the esophagus, it uh, starts from the C6, uh, C5, C6 uh, disc space from the inferior uh, border of the cricoid cartilage and uh, we see the constrictor muscle at the above level 
and uh, it has uh, two sphincter, the upper sphincter, which is formed by the constrictor muscle, and this is voluntary, and the lower sphincter are the uh, diaphragmatic hiatus, this is involuntary, and the upper uh, muscles of the skeleton and the lower is uh, smooth. So there is transition from voluntary to involuntary, yes. from skeletal to smooth muscles. And the esophagus starts on the left, goes to the midline, goes back to the left, yes. and it enters diaphragm at the stygial hiatus, mm -hmm. and there are mainly three hiatus in the diaphragm. Yes. What are the levels of them? Uh, three levels, uh, the uh, T8 uh, for the inferior vena cava, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, T10 for the uh, esophagus and the vagus uh, trunk. So it is 8, 10, 12. Yes, One yes. Uh, and 12, okay. yes, and 12 for the... Uh, Thoracic every aorta and thoracic duct. Every vertebra, there is a mm -hmm. Okay. And here we see the esophagus lying first uh, to the right to the descending and then pass anterior to it and then to the, the left to enter the uh, esophageal hiatus. <coughs> Good. Uh, this is the upper uh, sphincter and this is here the lower sphincter. Uh, the blood supply of the esophagus uh, divides into three uh, thirds. The upper third is supplied by the esophageal branch of the inferior thyroid artery. Uh, the middle third uh, is supplied by the thoracic aorta. The lower third is supplied by the branch of the left gastric artery. Uh, also the veins uh, divide into thirds. The upper third uh, from inferior thyroid vein, the middle from uh, azygous uh, vein, the lower uh, from portal system uh, via the left gastric vein. The lymphatic drainage, also, also the upper third to the deep cervical nodes, and the middle to the uh, posterior mediastinal nodes, and the lower third to the left gastric and celiac nodes. Uh, there are some indentations on the esophagus. Uh, in the cervical esophagus, uh, in the lateral view, we see uh, two indentations uh, here. The first from the posterior, posteriorly, this posterior indentation caused by the cricopharyngeus muscle contraction of the cricopharyngeus muscle and just below it uh, from the venous plexus uh, a small indent impression on the anterior from the venous plexus and here there is indentation from the uh, osteophyte of the uh, cervical vertebra Good. also if there is uh, masses or lymph nodes also cause indentation on it and this is the uh, thoracic uh, part there is two uh, indentation anteriorly smooth indentation first from the uh, aorta arch of the aorta and the second uh, from the uh, left main bronchus here in front of it we see a soft tissue this represent the arch of the aorta and here the gas shadow this is from the left uh, main bronchus also there is indentation on the uh, thoracic esophagus anteriorly from the left anterior uh, this is uh, shallow indentation from the left atrium anteriorly and uh, in the lower third of the esophagus uh, there is uh, two rings uh, which uh, a ring represent a ring uh, this number number two a ring and the this is three uh, b ring and between them is the uh, fring ampulla or the vestibule of the esophagus uh, the a ring above and the b ring is below and uh, this is the diaphragm here and uh, in this picture we see this is the uh, lower esophageal sphincter uh, sorry lower, uh, the gastroesophageal junction here and this is the uh, bearing uh, the bearing if narrowed it's mm -hmm. called uh, Schadowski ring you know it's bearing in the book it's like that this picture from the book so there is hernia here mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the bearing is it associated with a small uh, uh, hiatus hernia this part will go up to the diaphragm. Okay. This is the B ring. The A ring is uh, muscular and the B ring is mucosal fold. Mm -hmm. Another subject is the thoracic duct uh, and lymphatics. Uh, the thoracic duct uh, arises from a uh, circular uh, lymphatic reservoir called the cisterna chile, which lies uh, behind the right crust of the diaphragm anteriorly to the L1, L2 uh, vertebral bodies. The thoracic <coughs> duct uh, runs superiorly into the posterior mediastinum, passing uh, through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. It ascends anterior to the vertebral column, 
with the descending aorta on the left and the azygous on the right. It uh, descends behind the esophagus and uh, coming to lie left to this at the level of the T5. First it's behind the esophagus, then goes to the, uh, come to lie to the left of the esophagus at the level of T5. Then runs superiorly to its left side, runs superiorly and enter the neck uh, behind the uh, brachiocephalic vein and uh, then uh, goes laterally behind the uh, common carotid uh, vein and uh, arched over the anterior uh, or the apex of the left lung and lie 3 to 4 cm above the clavicle then enter the uh, left uh, subclavian vein uh, through the left uh, jugular subclavian uh, junction the thoracic uh, duct uh, drains uh, this area, this green one the uh, right, uh, sorry, the left uh, part of the head and neck, uh, the left uh, upper limb, and the uh, also drain the lower limb and uh, abdomen via the uh, cisterna chile. Uh, here, in this picture, we see the uh, enlargement of the left supraclavicular lymph node, or uh, the so-called virtue node. Uh, this is uh, very important to assess in case of. Uh, stomach or upper GI tumor uh, because uh, this uh, is the first site of metastatic lymph node spread uh, in case of stomach or GI uh, tumor uh, and this one this reflect the uh, lymphatic drainage of the uh, lower uh, lower abdomen via the cisterna cali to the thoracic duct and then to the jugular subclavian junction uh, the right lymphatic duct uh, the right uh, lymphatic duct has uh, three converging trunks the first uh, right jugular trunk, which drains the right side of the head and the neck, and the right subclavian trunk drains the upper arm and uh, right half of the thoraco-abdominal wall, and uh, right brachiomediastinal, right uh, right brachiomediastinal trunk, which drains the right uh, hemithorax. Uh, these three uh, trunks uh, unite and form the uh, right lymphatic duct, which is about one cm long, will enter the right jugular subclavian junction. Uh, sometimes they enter the uh, subclavian vein uh, separately uh, without the right lymphatic uh, duct. The mediastinal lymph nodes, uh, we have two groups, anterior mediastinal lymph nodes and posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, the anterior uh, compromise uh, first uh, the internal mammary chain uh, which accompany the internal mammary vessels. Pre-aortic group which lie anterior to the ascending aorta and uh, tracheobronchial nodes. Tracheobronchial nodes uh, are the cent lie centrally and around the trachea and its bifurcation. And these are the groups uh, I will discuss on the picture. And the posterior, we have posterior mediastinal lymph nodes. Uh, this found along the aorta and the esophagus and also anterior to uh, or and on either side of the spinal column. And uh, its name is derived according to the vessel which is adjacent to it. If it's adjacent to the aorta, paraaortic or adjacent to the esophagus paraesophageal or to the spinal column paraspin uh, paraspinal. <coughs> In this picture we see here is the, uh, here we see at the hilum, uh, the group uh, bronchopulmonary nodes and the carinal, subcarinal or carinal nodes uh, and the tracheobronchial uh, area, tracheobronchial nodes and here also located the azygous and uh, here are orthopulmonary nodes. Thymus, uh, is the, this organ uh, is part of the lymphatic system. Uh, it lies anti in the anterior mediastinum. It has two lobes, right and left. The left uh, is larger and higher uh, compared to the right. It is visible in the chest X-ray uh, within 24 hours of birth. With its lower, lower well-defined horizontal border, this border is protruded uh, on either side of the mediastinum, to the right or to the left, and this is called sales sign. You can see it on the right or on the left. It's gradually involuting after two years of age and rarely be seen on chest X-ray after eight years of age. It's also seen by uh, ultrasound, high resolution, and CT and MRI as a soft tissue structure. The azygous system, uh, these veins are found in the posterior mediastinum. It consists of, on the right, azygous vein, and on the left, hemiazygous and accessory uh, hemiazygous. In this picture, we see uh, this is a zygous on the right, 
the azygous uh, either it's uh, formed directly from the inferior uh, vena cava or uh, as a confluence of the uh, as right ascending lumbar vein and right subcostal vein. It ascends right to the trachea. It ascends right to the trachea, and then at the level of the T4, it arcs of the right uh, pulmonary. It ascends right. Trachea was not. Uh, sorry, uh, right to the aorta. Aorta. Sorry. Okay. It ascends right to the aorta, uh, and uh, at the level of the uh, T4 vertebra, it arcs over the right hilum to enter the posterior aspect of the superior vena cava. And uh, the azygous uh, drains uh, all the uh, right, right interco posterior intercostal vein uh, except the first one, which directly enter the brachiocephalic. Sometimes the, uh, the first, uh, the second, and the third enter into in a common trunk called a right superior intercostal vein. And uh, uh, here the on the left is the uh, hemiazygous vein and accessory hemiazygous. The hemiazygous uh, is related to the left renal vein and pass superiorly to the right of the uh, aorta, I think. Uh, sorry, left to the aorta and uh, pass then passes behind the aorta at the level of the mid thoracic to enter to the azygous. This drain the, last, uh, the lower f uh, fourth and posterior intercostal from 9 to 12 and also the, uh, drain the ascending lumbar vein enter to it at its uh, origin. Uh, the accessory hemiazygous uh, hemi vein, this descends superiorly and uh, to the left of the aorta and then at the mid thoracic pass uh, behind the aorta to enter to the azygous. <coughs> Sometimes the accessory hemiazygous and the hemiazygous uh, drain into the azygous in a common trunk. The accessory hemiazygous drain the, from the fourth to the uh, eighth posterior intercostal. The first and second and third drain into the brachiocephalic directly. Important nerves of the mediastinum, uh, these nerves are uh, the first, uh, the vagus nerve, uh, which is the tenth cranial nerve, passed through the neck in the carotid sheath enters the superior mediastinum posteriorly to the internal jugular vein and the brachiocephalic vein. Here is the uh, vagus nerve, enter posterior to the uh, vessel, brachiocephalic and internal jugular. It descends from the neck uh, in a common, uh, in the carotid sheath, and uh, it goes the posterior to the uh, bronchi, main stem bronchi, and uh, form a pulmonary plexus, and then uh, descend down uh, anterior and posterior to the esophagus forming esophageal plexus and uh, continue as the uh, pulmonary uh, vagal trunk anterior and posterior and enter to the, uh, the uh, abdomen via the esophageal uh, hiatus. Uh, the vagus nerve gives branch uh, of the recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right and on the left. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, arches, uh, whips around the uh, right subclavian right subclavian uh, artery and the left uh, vagus nerve uh, twins around the aortic arch uh, the other nerves are uh, the phrenic nerve arises from the C3 to 5 uh, cervical nerves this uh, from the motor supply of the diaphragm any injury to the phrenic nerve along its course uh, cause damage to the diaphragm and uh, result in diaphragmatic palsy the sympathetic trunk uh, runs inferiorly in the posterior mediastinum in the paraspinal gutters, come to lie in front of the bodies of T11 and 12 before passing through the diaphragm behind the medial arcuate ligament to continue as the lumbar sympathetic trunk. The mediastinum uh, on the chest radiograph, <coughs> the contour of the mediastinum <coughs> on the right and on the left uh, is formed by uh, vessels and uh, some structures. Uh, on the right, uh, it's formed by the uh, right uh, subclavian uh, vein, uh, then uh, below it, uh, superior vena cava, which, uh, the right, uh, which li lies behind the right border of the manubrium. Uh, and he, where we see this, the, uh, this border formed by ascending aorta. And this, uh, below the hilum is the uh, border from 
formed by right atrium. Uh, sometimes we see the uh, inferior vena cava uh, here entering to the right atrium. And uh, this uh, right cardiofreeing angle uh, is uh, sharper on the right compared to the left, uh, but sometimes obscured by the uh, small uh, fat pads. Uh, on the left, uh, the superior shadow is formed by also by the vein and by the subclavian artery sometimes. And uh, below this is the aortic arch, uh, which uh, this aortic arch or uh, the this uh, prominence called aortic uh, knob or aortic knuckle, and this is more uh, prominent in elderly. And, uh, and if there is unfolding of the aorta. Uh, below this, there is aorta pulmonary uh, window, and obliteration of this window uh, demonstrate that there is uh, some pathology. And uh, here, this area is for the uh, left pulmonary artery. And uh, just below it, uh, the left atrium, but uh, we cannot see it if, uh, if there is, just we can see it if there is enlargement of left the, uh, yes, left atrial appendage, we can see uh, there is, uh, there will be a straight line if there is left atrial enlargement uh, from uh, There will be stenosis. straightening of the left, I mean, left yes. cardiac border. The only part of the left atrium that is visible on the chest X-ray is the left atrial appendage. First. Yes. Second, brachiocephalic trunk, some people call it the innominate vein. Yes. So yeah, when you see an innominate vein, they mean brachiocephalic vein, okay? Okay. Uh, the uh, le this left uh, or le this border of the descending aorta sometimes is seen, and uh, here uh, the right cardiofreak angle also left cardiofrenic. Uh, sorry left cardiofreak angle sometimes obscured by the uh, fat pad. Uh, this is also the mediastinal control on the right on the la lateral chest. Uh, here we see the uh, shadow of the uh, heart lies uh, behind the lower third of the sternum. And uh, the right ventricle and right outflow tract is anterior here. And uh, above it, there the two uh, lungs uh, come uh, in contact and form the uh, retrosternal uh, air space. And here they demonstrate the arch of the aorta. Uh, and the posteriorly, uh, the posterior part of the heart, shadow of the heart, the from the above is the left atrium, and down is the left ventricle. And we can see the inferior vena cava here. It enters to the right atrium, uh, just anterior to the left. The, and the right atrium is lying anterior to the left atrium. At this uh, frontal chest X-ray, uh, we see uh, there is uh, this lateral projection of the uh, small projection of the, the lateral surface of the aortic knuckle. This is called the aortic nipple. Uh, this uh, formed when the left uh, superior intercostal vein uh, runs superiorly to, to drain into the left brachiocephalic vein and uh, runs across the aorta and forming this projection called the aortic nipple. So it's a normal drain. Yes. This also <coughs> from the lateral. Uh, this mediastinal contour anteriorly formed by the right ventricle and right outflow tract. Uh, the right outflow tract uh, from the its origin first it lies anterior to the uh, arch of the aorta and then pass to the uh, pass to the uh, posterior to it and form and divide into right and left pulmonary artery. And the more the most posterior part is the left atrium and below it left ventricle, and here the inferior vena cava enter to the right atrium. First, you should know the most posterior part is the left atrium, and that's why we use it, uh, we use transesophageal echocardiography for better definition, because it's very posterior, the left atrium. You see it very nicely in uh, transesophageal uh, approach. Second, you should not always, always, the, pre, uh, the retrosternal space should be of the same density as the retrocardiac space. Mm -hmm. Yes. If one of them is not as the same as the other, there is some problem. We need to evaluate. Okay. Uh, Media sinus lines. Uh, the, the lines formed when the air-filled lung uh, come in contact with the linear soft tissue structure. This linear soft tissue structure represents as a, soft, as a density as a line. If, uh, if air outlines the two sides of this thin structure, then it represents as a stripe. And this relation uh, may be uh, more appreciated on CT. 
the media style lines, uh, this, these are the lines. First, uh, the right paratracheal stripe, this is the par right paratracheal stripe. Uh, this is uh, formed at the, uh, at the tracheobronchial angle uh, from the clavicle to the uh, zygus. And uh, when the right lung comes in contact with the trachea, and this should not be more than three uh, millimeters. The trachea contains air, yeah, the lung contains air, so uh, wall, air to co uh, trachea <laughs> wall between two airs will be as a line. As a stripe, yes. At the posterior junctional line, uh, this is when the two lungs come in contact posterior to the trachea, and uh, this extend from the T1, uh, from the level of T1 extend vertically, and uh, it ends at the arch of the air. <coughs> The anterior junctional line is anteriorly and two lungs are in contact together and uh, this is passing from the uh, below the level of the clavicle but the posterior junctional was above the level of the clavicle. This we see below the level of the clavicle and uh, slightly to the left. So the anterior junctional line is inferior to the clavicle while posterior junctional line is superior, uh, posteri yes. superior to the clavicle. Yes, yes. and this anterior is, uh, this is below the level of the clavicle and uh, slightly to the left, uh, to the left, and this uh, always ends uh, at the right outflow tract, uh, right uh, ventricular outflow tract. The esophageal recess, uh, this is when the azygous vein is close contact to the esophagus, slide to the posterior lateral to it. Uh, when the uh, lungs acute these two structures uh, forming this recess, and uh, uh, this is slightly curved to the right. Other lines, uh, paraspinal lines, uh, here we see right paraspinal line. This is when the lung comes in contact with the soft tissue uh, of, uh, of, the right, of the bones, yes, of the uh, right side of the uh, vertebral column, uh, forming this right uh, paraspinal line. Uh, the right paraspinal line is sharper than the left paraspinal line, and uh, any enlargement of this line uh, always uh, pathological. The left paraspinal line, uh, this is also the, between the le uh, left border of the vertebral column and the lung, and this is not uh, so sharp as the uh, right because of the descending aorta, and uh, enlargement uh, more than 1 cm, uh, or uh, enlargement, uh, enlargement of this outer to the transverse process, uh, this is uh, also pathological. The aortopulmonary, aortic pulmonary stripe, <coughs> uh, here uh, this is formed uh, by the reflecting pleura from the uh, aorta to the pulmonary trunk and left pulmonary artery. This forms the lateral border of the aortopulmonary window. The posterior uh, tracheal stripe, uh, this is uh, formed by the posterior wall of the trachea uh, and the uh, posterior wall of the trachea and the lung and uh, this measure two to three million, uh, but uh, if the uh, esophagus come in contact and uh, collapsed esophagus come in contact, uh, this may uh, reach the one cm. Uh, some points on cross-sectional uh, anatomy of the chest. Uh, okay. Uh, at the level of the T3 vertebra, uh, this is at the level of the uh, superior mediastinum, we see here the trachea and the midline, not divided yet, and these uh, two uh, are the right and left lungs, uh, and posterior to the trachea is the esophagus, and we see here the branch of the arch of the aorta, uh, the first, uh, the brachiocephalic, uh, right brachiocephalic, and then left common carotid posterior to lateral to it, and then the left uh, subclavian posterior lateral to it. Uh, these vessel crossed anteriorly by the brachiocephalic vein, uh, which are just below this level, the brachiocephalic vein unites with the right brachiocephalic vein forming the superior vena cava. Uh, at the level of the T4, below that level, uh, the superior vena cava is formed, and this is the arch of the aorta, and uh, to the right there is a zygous vein which enters with the posterior aspect of the superior vena cava. And also there is trachea here in the midline and not divided yet. Uh, at the level of the T5, and this plan or just uh, this plan at or just below the tracheal bifurcation here the tracheal bifurcates into right and left uh, le left and right yes okay here pulmonary trunk divides into left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery the left pulmonary artery 
uh, superior to the left main bronchus and right pulmonary artery anterior to the left right main bronchus near the ascending aorta and the descending aorta Good. and the esophagus uh, posterior to the trachea and here we see the anterior junctional line uh, level of T6 uh, here at the upper part of the heart we see the uh, right arterial appendage uh, overlaps the uh, ascending aorta and the, uh, here is the right ventricular outflow tract anterior to the ascending aorta at this level the aorta gives the branch of the coronary arteries posterior is the left atrium and the uh, pulmonary veins enter to the left atrium and here the descending and the ascending and posterior to the uh, posterior here the side of the esophagus at the level of the T8 uh, uh, vertebra, uh, the, uh, this pass through the heart, this is the four chambers of the heart. We see here the most anterior chamber is the right ventricle, and the right border of the heart formed by the right atrium, the left border of the heart formed by the left ventricle, the most posterior chamber is the uh, right uh, atrium. Left atrium. Uh, left atrium, sorry. At the level of the T10, this is uh, pass part of the abdomen is uh, shown here. Uh, so we see the dome of the liver here and the spleen and the esophagus enter into the stomach uh, at the gastroesophageal junction. And that's all. Thank you Thank very you. much. Very nice. I like very much.